So something a little bit different this week. So we always do digital sculpting in this channel and normally with Nomad or ZBrush or something like that, but we're gonna do some clay sculpting in the next few videos. And I do a lot of clay sculpting, but I don't really talk about it that much. So I've got some clay, a new type of clay to me called Alien Clay, and that's come from Form X in Amsterdam. They've got shops in Madrid and also in Barcelona. And the company that makes Alien Clay makes my favorite clay, which is Chavant Medium in Terracotta. So let's try Alien Clay, and I'll actually work through the entire process over this entire series of videos and show you how I handle a project like this. So before we dive in and talk about the clay, I just wanted to talk about where the reference for this project came from. So I got this book for, by Katrina Van Gro or Grau, I'm not sure how you say that. Um, and I've had it for about a year or two, and it's all basically about the unfeathered birds. So it's about bird anatomy. Um, and it, it's always been super inspiring to me, especially because I do a lot of dinosaurs and a lot of creatures. And I just really, I picked out a few images that really inspired me, like this great hornbill, um, where it's sat on a branch and, and it's the full skeletal anatomy. Um, and I just went through the book, getting more and more inspired by, by this lady's work. Um, I picked out this one as well, which is a mallard, a duck. And you can see here all of the anatomy, um, which you never get to see on birds because of the feathers. And I just thought as a project, it would be really cool if we did sort of like a, you know, some kind of weird bird anatomy um, without any feathers. So a cross between a bird and a bat, maybe something like that. So we'll sculpt it up um, and we'll, we'll what I decided to do at this point of me recording this, I've already done the project um, apart from the clay part. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch my idea in Nomad Sculpt on the iPad. Um, I would normally do that either in a moleskin or, or on an iPad as, as I have done here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make it digitally just to show you how I would build something. So I'm going to make the armature in a digital way just to show you how it's done. You don't need to do that section at all, but it, it, it will just be a way for me to explain how I would approach something like this. And then from there, we'll actually build it. So we'll build the base. We'll build, um, we'll put the wire in all together in another video and then we'll do the, the we'll bulk it out with tinfoil and then we'll use the alien clay. So it's going to be a few videos before we get to the alien clay bit. But I just thought how inspiring is it to see something like this with this bird anatomy. Um, it, a really good book if you can get your hands on it. And again, it's by this lady here, Katrina Van Guru, G R. O U W. So let's dive in and let's just do some, let me show you a video of me sketching. So I've already got the idea now. I know what I want. I want a, a you know, kind of a bird creature. So basically all I do is I start sketching away and I, I, I did a few sketches before this and I came up with, with what I wanted to do. Um, and, and then I just started to sketch it out in a way that I can use as um, a reference. So I just sketched out the body from the side and then obviously did it from the front and then really kind of worked out the full anatomy with the wing, the, the neck, the arm, the back, what the stand would be like, the little log that he's going to be sat on. Um, and then I, I just worked out the volumes, the key volumes or the, the amount of uh, mass there is in certain parts of his body. So like a lot in the belly, I wanted a fat little belly um, I wanted a, you know, quite chunky little chicken type legs. Um, and then from that sketch, then I did actually paint up a few um, just with what we, what we would call value sketches. So just black and white sketches just to show what I think this thing could look like if it was fleshed out a little bit. And then from those sketches, that allows me to dive right in and start making the, the digital model. Now, again, the digital model bit, I reiterate, you don't have to do this bit, but I just thought it would be cool if I was to show you um, how I do this. So let's just dive right in and you can watch me sculpting in Nomad for a few minutes. So anyone that follows the channel will know Nomad or Nomad Sculpt anyway. Uh, if you don't know it, I'll explain it to you. So Nomad is a digital sculpting program. It's very similar to something you'd find on a desktop, like a Mac or a PC called ZBrush or even Blender, which is another program you can sculpt in. But this is a sculpting program that's very cheap. It's under $20 um, and you basically can just do this kind of sculpting that you can see me doing here now very, very quickly on an iPad with an Apple Pencil. 
So you've got a number of tools, you've got move, you've got a, a way to add clay, called just called clay. Um, you can score into the surface. And what I'm doing there is I've, I've made a rough shape with what's called a tube tool. And because I've done the sketch and that's in the background, as if I would in the real world, like I'm going to do in this project, I've got the image in the background there, so I would have that on my desk in the project. And I just start building um, around that. Now, what you don't need for this is an armature, because what I'm doing is obviously it doesn't need to support itself. It's digital, and that's a you know a great thing about digital. So I am a big believer in both digital and physical. I love both mediums. I teach both mediums, um, but but I don't think any physical sculptor should be scared of digital, and I don't think likewise. You know, any phys digital sculptor should really always go and try some some physical it's it's two very very different things to learn but the way i to just des i describe it to people who work on films and people that i teach is digital is just another string to your bow so if you need to learn um you know if you, if you want to expand what you do this is a great way to do it without great expense obviously you're going to need an ipad and an apple pencil so a lot of the time like you can see here you just start with primitive shapes so i i, I just started with a log there which is going to be for the um, you know, for the for the um, stand, the, the the branch that he's going to be sitting on, and then I use another tube, and I just made one of his talons. So we can use lots of repeats, which you can't do in the real world. So that's quite useful. So it's very quick to make something like the foot, and then you can mash it all together with something called voxel remesh. So it, it basically brings everything together. It's like you're merging your clay or smudging all your clay together. You can use tools like trim, things that you'd use in, 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 in the physical world. You'd use like a knife and you'd, you'd cut things away or you'd scrape things away. Um, the rake tools aren't that good in digital sculpting. The, the, there is rake-like tools, but it's not as good because realistically, you're not adding and taking clay away. What you're doing is you're pulling and pushing a surface in and out. So it's very different in that way to, to the real world. But as you can see, you can, you know, you can manipulate it really, really easily. And again, most of the people that follow this channel would know what, what this is all about because because we talk about digital sculpting more than physical. But if you're new to this sort of stuff and you're more into the physical side of it, this is a good way to step into digital sculpting. So as you can see there now, I've got the arms done, the body's done, the legs are done. Um, now I'm just doing some really thin things that become, the, these are like the fingers that become the, the bones of the wing. So again, I'll just make one shape, duplicate it, copy it round, and I'm only doing one big, big advantage um, of uh, digital sculpting is that you can do you know symmetrical modeling. So I'm modeling on both wings at the same time. So that does give you some speed. Definitely, that definitely improves you a little bit. So uh, now I've done the block out, as we call it, the primary shapes. I'm moving on to adding the secondary. So I'm doing things like big muscle groups, like big muscles over the face, over the eyebrow, uh, wherever there's a defining muscle um, that, that really changes the look or the shape of the model. To add scoring and scra scratching to the surface, you can use something called the crease tool. And that allows us to you know, score in. That's like using um, you know, some kind of a tool that's scoring into the surface. And you can obviously smooth it down um, as you're working. So you can like scrape along the surface with crease and then smooth it down. So I've added in more primitives there. So join all of them bottom ones together, use the trim tool to chop them off. And then I'm just gonna like a bit of clay sculpt in here and then use that thing I talked about, which is called voxel um, merging. And then basically from there, I can just do some sculpting on the top. Um, and it is very fast. It's, you know, it's it, if you just wanna try something and you don't wanna commit to clay, then this is a great way just to test it. It might not have the finish that you like, but it surely is a great way to test things like perspective and the length of a limb what you know how you're going to pose the creature um and you see there i bent the 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 the, the tree that's a good thing to try out in digital because it's so much quicker now you don't have to do this this is just me just you know just trying and experimenting before i committed to using the clay on it so um you, you, you know it, it's not a thing you need to do and um, now I've put a little an extra little uh, branch on it there so I'm going to merge them together and um, just to add a little bit of detail at the back there uh, these are the materials I just changed the material a little bit so you can make it look like clay you can make it look like all different types of stuff um, and there I'm just snapping um, um, basically an image from the front and the side now 
when I've done that, the, the, the big thing that I wanted to show you here is um, what the armature is going to be looking like. So I've only done this just for this video. I've just shown you what the what the armature will look like. So I've gone ahead and I've made some K and S, which is the little brass blocks that you can see, and um, the, the brass blocks fit together, allowing me to. Uh, the wings will come out, but they'll fit together with these little brass connectors. And they're not connectors, they're just one tube that goes into one uh, square that goes into another square. The green or the blobby bit you can see there is going to be epoxy. So that'll either be epoxy putty or epoxy resin, which is like a, a glue that sets really, really strong. So a wooden base, um, a, 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 a aluminium wire that's bent into the shape that I want it based on the reference image. And then where I want things to come off the model, which is really for casting and, you know, whenever you want to do something that has removable parts, then you've got the little brass rods. And this is just a great way to show you how or what the intent is of how we intend to, 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 to make this design for, you know, for, for this um, armature. And then you can see there the actual digital model with the armature inside it. And it gives you a really good example of what this is going to look like when it's finished. Now you can't do this physically because obviously you can't see inside your model, but you can see there with the, with the wings that I've, I've sh shown what the wing is like fitting to the body with the K and S blocks. Um, Again, you can't do that, you know, physically at the end of your sculpting process, you can see what you've done here. But th this is just a good way for me to train people and show people how it works. Uh, and this is a very, very standard way um, of, of making an armature that then you, you know, you can you know, fit together. Um, so I, as we're sculpting, we're going to bear in mind that these wings will come off. So there will be a seam line of some kind. Uh, and again, that's something you can work out digitally. So you can work out where your splits are going to go, where your seam lines are going to go. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this bit because this is this is something that you know you, you, you genuinely don't need, but it really helps you explain how I'm gonna uh, design this in the physical world, um, which is which is coming in the next video. Um, but f from a, a digital point of view, you couldn't you could actually not bother going to clay. You could just use this digital and three D printer, which is something I do a lot of. Um, but this 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 really helps me give you a good example um, of where we're going with this project. But, you know, well before we ever get to to, to the clay stage, um, because the, the 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 flow of the process is this: we're going to sort the base out, little wooden base, then the armature. So we're going to get all the wire we need, all the aluminium we need, and then we're going to epoxy that together and then cover that with tinfoil. And that's all coming in the next video. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's very different than the content we normally do. If you did like it, please give us a thumbs up. It does help us to get in front of other people that may like it. And because it's different, we wanna to get to a wider audience. If you did like it, then subscribe to the channel as well. And we can let you know when new content's coming up. And obviously the next video in this series will be part of that. So have a great week, everyone, and speak to you soon.